With the ever so popular genre of Future House growing day by day, we're starting to see a lot of creative artists coming out with tons of hit tracks. Artists such as Don Diablo, Mike Williams, and Retrovision, just to name a few, dominate the genre. However, one of the biggest artists in the scene seems to be Mo Falk. The German-born DJ and producer best describes his style as a blend of Electro House and Future House, which really gives him that hard-hitting character, along with the interesting sound design that comes from Future House. Mo Falk entered the scene with great success following the release of his single Mammoth, which catapulted his career and allowed him to sign under labels such as Hexagon, Helldeep, and Mixmash Records. In today's video, we'll be attempting to deconstruct that unique Future House style and understand what makes Mo Falk such an amazing artist. As always, if you enjoy the track we'll be making in today's video, be sure to follow me on Spotify so you can hear the full thing for yourself. To start off the track, we'll first introduce the most defining element of the song, a guitar loop. If you're wondering where I got this guitar loop from, it's an Apple loop titled Disco Freak Guitar. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. This is a cardinal sin of EDM right here. Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> we also have two sets of chords. One that plays along with the guitar, but has effects such as delay and reverb coming from Serum to give the intro a wider feel and a more super saw type chord sound that starts getting introduced after the first four bars through the use of a low pass filter. The first chord sound has an EQ that rolls off from about 7 kHz and onwards, and a low cut from about 400 Hz and downwards to leave room for the low end. There's also a slight boost of about 5 dB at 1.5 kHz to bring out the sound's character. The other chord has a similar EQ as well. We also have an impact sample that has an EQ that rolls off from about 1 kHz and downwards, and we have tambourines and shakers to give us that dance music vibe. The biggest things we're going to add coming to the verse are drums, a plucky bass line, and a melody to play over top of it all. Starting off with the drums, we're going to create a simple beat using Logic's Infinity Drum Kit and the piano roll. We're also going to add some swing to give it that groovy feel. Moving on to the bass line, we have two bass presets from Serum. The first is a more mid-bass focused sound, and the other fills up more of the low end. Both sounds also have a really plucky transient as well, which helps it cut through the mix. Lastly, our melody is made up of two presets from Serum. The first is a more mid-focused sound to give the melody some width and support, and the second sound fills up more of the high end, giving a bit of delay and reverb added through Serum. For the build, we'll do a signature EDM style drum build using the same drum samples from the Infinity Drum Kit, where we start off with quarter notes, moving into eighth notes, and then sixteenths, with a bit of snare rolls added in for variation. We'll also make sure to have the swing on to make the build not sound as robotic and keep that groovy character. Once that's set, we'll throw in a riser, a drum fill, and reverse crash right before the drop. The melody, guitar, and bass are also going to follow that quarter 8 16th pattern from the build as well, and we'll also automate a low cut EQ to add some tension leading up into the build as well. Now, while Mo Falk loves to add lots of interesting elements and unique layers into his drops, for the sake of the video and my computer CPU, we'll only add the elements that I think Mo Falk would use and also add a unique touch. To start off, we have a dubstep inspired growl made in Serum that will add a lot of grit to our drop and will also play on the first beat of every four bars. After that, we have the same guitar sample as before, but to make it a bit grittier and have it stand out with all the elements playing in the drop, we've gone ahead and added a grit pedal from Logic's stock pedal board and an amp from Logic's stock amp design. The amp has a bass setting lowered and the mid and treble setting slightly raised. We're also using an emulation of the Shure SM57 placed off axis from the head of the amp as well. Our lead synth was created using three distinct sounds that each serve a unique purpose. The first synth mainly occupies the higher octaves and adds width from about 3 to 5 kHz. The second synth fills up the high mid frequencies and also has a harder transient to give the overall sound some more punch. And the last synth is a more detuned style synth that gives the overall sound some more character. Moving on to the bass, we also have three unique sounds as well. 
The first is a sub that occupies mainly the lower end, mostly at around 80 to 100 hertz. The second sound is a mid bass that adds some character and also has an EQ that cuts off low frequencies from 80 hertz and downwards to leave room for this sub. The last bass was used mainly for its punchy transient, which lies at around 800 hertz. Moving on to the chords, they follow the same progression as before, but they have an LFO pattern from Serum, which gives them a unique rhythm. The two are then panned left and right to add more overall width to the drop. Lastly, the drums are mainly a standard 4 on the floor pattern, with white noise risers, drum fills, and effects that correlate to what's happening in the song. And that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. As always, if you wanna see another video like this one, comment down below who you'd want to see next. If you wanna hear the full track, the link to my Spotify will be down below in the description. For now, here's the final result.